Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Maya Joy Kana and today we are going to speak about how you can get more restful and rejuvenating sleep. Getting enough sleep should be one of the top things on your to-do list for your spiritual health and well-being. All of us can probably recollect a day where we did not get enough sleep and then went through our day acting a little bit out of alignment with our highest self, maybe being a little bit short with people or maybe because of sleep deprivation, maybe not treating our bodies the best, not getting the best food, maybe getting in an unnecessary argument or just generally feeling out of alignment because of not getting enough sleep. So when we get deep sleep, we are able to replenish ourselves, mind, body, and soul. When we go to sleep, we have the chance to actually travel out of body and to get to correspond with our angels and spirit guides and to get healing in the higher realms. But a lot of us do struggle to get quality and restful sleep, especially in this modern age. And one of my subscribers identifies as being an empath or highly sensitive person and asked how those of us who are more sensitive can get quality sleep. This video is going to cover a lot of different information and is going to offer a lot of different suggestions and I just want everybody to know you don't have to follow all of this advice in order to get a good night's rest but the more of these tips and tricks that you can incorporate the more likely that you are to get restful sleep on a very consistent basis. Believe it or not there's actually a correlation between being intelligent and not sleeping so well. And I believe this is because those of us who are very intelligent tend to have very active minds and have a more difficult time shutting off our mind at the end of the night. Another thing that can cause difficulties with sleep is having an overactive nervous system or being very, very sensitive to stimuli. And the reason this can affect sleep is because those of us that are really sensitive to our environments are more likely to be disturbed by our environment and have more of a difficult time relaxing at the end of the night. So people that have really sensitive nervous systems are also going to be more sensitive to light, more sensitive to sound, more sensitive to the energy or emotions of other people that are sleeping in their house. And the more sensitive that you are, the more likely that you'll have to make special efforts in order to get restful sleep. But I'm telling you, it is definitely worth the effort. And this is coming from somebody who actually has a lot of sleep issues in my family. I actually have family members with narcolepsy and sleep apnea and insomnia. And out of my direct family, I think that I probably have solved the mystery the best and figured out the best ways to get sleep. But that wasn't always the case. When I was little, I never once slept at any of my nap times. Of course, I always had nap times as all little kids do, but I can remember my nanny putting me in my room to take a nap and just sitting there and staring at the wall each and every day for two to three hours because I was never ever able to fall asleep. So solving the sleep mystery has been a really important part of my life's journey. I also think that those of us that are more psychically sensitive or intuitive also have greater sleep issues because those of us that are psychically sensitive have more sensitive pineal glands, which are commonly referred to as the third eye. And our pineal glands actually are responsible for picking up on light signals in our environment. And so if you are clairvoyant and you have psychic sight, you're also going to be way, way more sensitive to the light that's all around you. And of course, those of us who are very psychic or intuitive or who have natural spiritual gifts may also have had experiences when we were really young of seeing spirits or seeing ghosts or things like that and that can affect our sleep as well. Finally, a really common problem amongst those who are not getting good sleep is an endocrine system that is a little bit out of balance. So as human beings, our endocrine system is meant to regulate our circadian rhythms, making us feel wakefulness at certain times of the day and making us 
feel sleepy at certain times of the day or to calm down at certain times of the day. For many of us, our hormones and our endocrine system are out of balance. And the most common reason that this occurs is because of stress. In this modern age, people are exposed to much, much more stress than what we would have been 100 or 200 years ago. There's constant flurries of activity, tons of pressure at work, tons of family pressure, tons of pressure to look a certain way on social media. And even though we have all these tools that are supposed to make our lives easier, most of us are busier than ever before. And when we experience chronic stress on a day-to-day -day basis, it pulls our hormones out of whack. And that can impact our sleep as well. Here are some ways that you can bring your sleep back into balance. As human beings, we were designed to live in correspondence with nature. So in our most natural environment, we would wake up with the sunrise in the morning and we would start to feel sleepy as the sun set at night. It's important to understand that artificial light, like lamps and overhead lighting, has really only been common for about a hundred years and our bodies don't necessarily evolve that quickly. Our bodies are going to do what they are designed to do. When our bodies are exposed to bright light, they are going to try to stay awake, and when our bodies are exposed to darkness, they are going to fall into sleep. So if you're having sleep issues, one of the first things that you can do is think really seriously about your light exposure and do your very best to try to dim the lights when it gets dark outside and to try to match the environment in your home or your office with the cycles of nature. It's so important to lower your light at sunset. Now this doesn't mean that you need to turn off the lights in your home as soon as the sun sets. But it's important to have light sources that are not going to be as stimulating to you for the nighttime. And those can include things like candles, fairy lights, or Christmas lights. My favorite light source after dark is a headlamp. Specifically, my husband and I both have red headlamps that we use whenever night falls. Right now it's getting dark around 8.30 or 9, so as soon as it hits 8.30 or 9, we still sometimes have tasks that we need to do around the house. We can't always get right in bed when it's dark, but we find that using a red headlamp really helps. In the rainbow spectrum, the closer to white or bright white light that we're exposed to, the more it's gonna disrupt our sleep. And the opposite end of the spectrum from that sort of burning like bright blue, bright white light, we have red light. And this is much less stimulating to our eyes. As human beings, we are designed to respond to blue light, especially because the blue light or that blue tone of light is the light of the sky. And that bright white light is the light of the sun. When we see those types of lights, especially, that tells our body, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. What many of us don't realize is is that our electronics, our phone, and our computer, and our television, they all emit that bright light. They all emit that bright blue light, which may actually be very harmful to our health, but that's a topic of a different video. But in terms of sleep, the light from our electronic sources is most definitely, definitely disrupting our sleep. So if you're sitting at night hoping that you can sleep, but in a couple hours before bed, if you're sitting and staring at your phone and scrolling through social media or your computer, you have to realize that you are staring directly into a light source, and that is telling your body to stay awake, <laughs> telling your body not to go to sleep. And you know, none of us would sit at night and just stare directly into our lamp or stare directly into a flashlight and then try to go to sleep. We would never do something like that. And yet, when we're sitting in front of our TV at night or our computer or our phone, that's exactly what we are doing. If you were just gonna change one thing to get better sleep, then I would recommend that the one thing that you change is the light that is around you and the sources of light that you are exposed to in the evenings. 
and specifically I would recommend putting a night shift or a night filter on all of your electronic devices all of the time. I have night shift on on my MacBook 100% of the time <laughs> because I found that my eyes are just really sensitive to light. I'm a highly sensitive person and even if I turn off my computer at 8 o'clock at night, say, if I'm looking at that bright blue light at 6 o'clock, it'll still impact my sleep. So I recommend putting a red filter or a night shift on all of your electronics all the time. During the evenings, try to avoid things that are designed to stimulate you. So try to avoid heated conversation. A lot of us watch movies or YouTube videos or read news articles in the evenings, but if you really think about it, the news and entertainment is designed to stimulate us and to make us feel exhilarated and to capture our attention. And those are not the types of things that you want to be doing if you hope to calm down in the evening. I have noticed a huge improvement in my sleep and my husband has noticed this as well. Ever since we started turning off all electronics two hours before our bedtime, when we first started doing this, it was pretty hard because we were both really dependent or maybe even a little bit like addicted to technological entertainment in the evenings. But we actually, when we started, we put up signs all over our home that said, no technology after eight, and we would hold each other accountable and watch each other power down our electronics at that time. And we made a special basket to put our laptops in and our phones and stuff like that. And we started falling asleep so much easier after that. I recommend in the evenings getting used to lower stimulation entertainment. In particular, I really recommend getting a library card and reading in the evenings instead of watching videos or watching news or scrolling through your phone. Books are amazing and I think we should all have a library card because libraries are just an amazing free resource in our communities with so many different books. My library allows us to check out up to a hundred books at a time. So my husband and I just go and get like 20 books at a time and that way we always have plenty of options at home to choose from in the evenings. If you don't like reading, writing is also another really good option. Writing in a journal with your headlamp or a candle about an hour before bed. Another really good option is meditation or even doing some nighttime yoga or something like that. But it's really important in the hour or two before bed to focus on lower stimulation activities and to really try to avoid conversations or entertainment or tasks that make you feel stressed. When you're working to improve your sleep, pay attention to how your meal times affect your bedtime. What I have noticed for myself is that I always fall asleep about three hours after I finish my dinner. So I can actually control my bedtime based on my dinner time. And I'm guessing that this is true for a lot of people. Now for you, it might not be three hours after your dinner that you fall asleep. It might be one hour or it might be five hours, but pay attention to how your meal times are affecting your bedtime. So for me, I noticed that if I want to stay up a little bit later because maybe I'm going to be spending time with friends or going to an event, then I can control that by eating dinner quite a bit later. So if I want to stay up until one o'clock in the morning, I can eat my dinner at eight and finish at nine and I'll stay up until one. But if I want to get to bed really early, I can sit down to eat at five, finish at six, and I'll be asleep by nine. A lot of people, are afraid of eating at night and I think sometimes being hungry can make it a lot more difficult for us to sleep. I believe that it is a myth that eating at night makes you fat or makes you gain weight. I don't think that's true at all and I'm a living example that it isn't true because I actually eat an OMAD diet meaning that I eat all my calories at my evening meal very close to bedtime and I eat a huge amount of food, a huge amount of carbs, Every single night, my BMI is always around 18 or 19. Eating at night has not made me fat at all, okay? I recommend that you do eat something 
at night, a couple hours before bedtime to help regulate your blood sugar and to help you sleep. If you're having trouble sleeping, you want to avoid stimulants like alcohol, like coffee, energy drinks, chocolate, things like that can definitely disrupt your sleep schedule even if you're having them at lunchtime. but you especially don't want to have soda or coffee or chocolate or sugar or stimulants like that at your dinner time if you're having trouble sleeping. Good things to eat would be warm foods, warm nourishing foods like oatmeal with some peanut butter or almond butter or a nice soup or nice warm bread with some avocado or nut butter or butter on top, or even warm milk, a warm dairy milk or a warm non-dairy option like soy milk or coconut milk, something that has protein and a little bit of fat and is going to help you to stay nourished and satisfied. Another good option could be a burrito or some pasta, something like that, something warm, nourishing, ground and high in protein that's going to help to stabilize your blood sugar a couple hours before bed will be a really good idea. Many of us can also benefit by taking supplements to help regulate our sleep cycles and to help us calm down at the end of the night. Now it seems to be popular knowledge that melatonin is the best sleep aid and whenever I go to health food stores I always see melatonin filling the sleep section. Melatonin is not very effective at helping us sleep unless we take it over a long period of time. So if you need to get very good sleep tonight or tomorrow, going to the store and buying melatonin isn't very likely to help you. I have experimented with a bunch of different sleep aids to help me feel relaxed in the evening. I've tried things like valerian and passionflower and ashwagandha and melatonin, but by far and away the most effective sleep aid for me has been this. This is Lemon Balm. This one is a brand I really have found to be effective. It's called Organs Wild Harvest. It's not just me that finds this effective. If you read through the Amazon reviews, you'll see reviews from people who used to be on prescription sleep aids like Ambien saying that this actually helped them more. So for me personally, I usually take two of these about 30 minutes before I am hoping to fall asleep, usually right when I get into my bed and I start reading and winding down for the night. And yes, I definitely notice the difference. It definitely helps me to feel calm and it really helps me to gently fall into a sleep state. So I usually take this at the beginning of the night and then I'll usually wake up sometime in the middle of the night and I will take it again <laughs> to sleep for the rest of the night. And I don't feel bad doing so because lemon balm is a powerful natural herb and it has many benefits to our body, not just helping us to relax, but it also has incredible benefits for our immune system and for our digestive health. So I feel good about taking it. Our bodies are designed to slightly drop in temperature in correspondence with when we fall asleep. If you're hoping to ease your body into sleep, you should consider adjusting the temperature in your bedroom to match ideal sleeping conditions. So studies have shown that we sleep best when the temperature is between 60 and 67 degrees. You can actually induce sleep by lowering the temperature in your surroundings, again, about 30 minutes or an hour before bed. So I definitely recommend programming the thermostat to drop the temperature a little bit when it's right around your bedtime. Another trick is to take a warm shower or bath before bed. I do that almost every night and that helps me a lot. Not only does it help to get any dust or allergens or things that might affect my sleep off my body before bed, but I think the most important thing is that when I come out of that warm shower or warm bath, my body temperature then responds to the cool environment outside. My body temperature drops from the warm shower to the cooler room and I can much more easily drift into sleep.
I also use a fan to keep the room cool at night and additionally the fan also helps to block any background noise. That helps me to stay in a sleep state as well. Another temperature regulating strategy for sleep is actually to wear socks. One thing that can wake a lot of people up is if their body is struggling to regulate a consistent temperature. Studies have shown that wearing socks at night, wearing clean, warm socks at night, can help our body to more successfully regulate its temperature. Whether that means lowering our temperature or staying warm and regulating our temperature, socks have been shown to help. I started wearing socks to sleep about a year or a year and a half ago and I found that my sleep was much more restorative. Now I wear socks to bed all the time. I keep a collection of slipper socks, like the fuzzy sort of socks, in my nightstand and I wear them every night. Even in the heat of summer when it's 90 degrees, even if I'm wearing very minimal pajamas, I still wear socks because it helps my sleep so so much. Many of us who are highly sensitive are very, very sensitive to sounds and we can feel ourselves drifting off into sleep and then all of a sudden there might be a little sound out the window and all of a sudden we're alert again. Our senses are on super overload as highly sensitive people. I recommend using something to dull the sound in your bedroom. I think the easiest ways to do this is either with a fan, plugging in a fan, or with a white noise machine. I just use a typical box fan. I only ever use my box fan when I sleep and as soon as I plug in the box fan I start yawning and I start going to sleep. Like even just thinking about it right now, just imagining if I were to plug in that box fan in here, it makes me almost sleep, almost feel like I need to sleep. And right now it's only one o'clock in the afternoon. So I think a fan can be a very powerful subconscious indicator and just that noise, that hum can help to soothe us into sleep. It's also very, very important that we sleep in darkness. This is especially the case if you are healing from disease or if you feel that your hormones or endocrine system is out of balance. Again, our bodies are designed to sleep in the dark. There hasn't been electricity for very long on this planet and before that it was completely dark when we slept at night. And the darkness helps our body to self-regulate our melatonin um, and our dopamine and serotonin levels within and our adrenaline levels within. So you want to get your room as dark as possible. And the easiest way to do this is with blackout curtains. I have blackout curtains in my bedroom. I got them at Walmart and typically I wouldn't recommend that all of us go out to Walmart and purchase products. But in this case, I did a lot of research and everybody said to get your blackout curtains from Walmart. People said, oh, I went and bought blackout curtains at Bed Bath & Beyond and I regretted it and returned them and went to Walmart. And there were so many accounts like that, so I, I would recommend getting blackout curtains from Walmart or a reputable distributor. You just want them to be thick and as dark as possible. I think you'll find that the blackout curtains will really, really help you. You want to get your room to the point where it's basically like a cave. It's basically completely dark when you shut the door, when you close the curtains, that there's total darkness. Now, a big part of getting it dark in your room is getting the electronics out. Because as many of you know, a lot of the electronics have little green lights or little red lights or things like that. I have found an incredibly profound link between having electronics on or having electronics in the bedroom and having poor sleep. I'm shocked by what I found. I can hardly even believe it. But it seems to me that it's not even just the small lights of the chargers and things like that of the electronics that impact sleep, but it also seems to be the actual waves that, that are emitted from the electronics, the electromagnetic frequencies that affect my sleep as well. I can always tell if I've forgotten to take my cell phone or computer out of the bedroom because I'll wake up with a headache, I'll wake up with a migraine every single time. And that's sometimes even the case if the electronics are powered off. 
So I'm not exactly sure everything that causes this phenomenon, but I'm sure that it exists. So get your room as dark as possible and get the electronics out of your room. Get them as far away from you as you can when you're trying to sleep because I really believe that the signals that they emit can disrupt our brain waves and our sleep cycles. I actually have a technology free bedroom. I actually went out and bought an old school alarm clock that just has batteries in it and that's how I have my alarm and there's no TV in the bedroom, there's no music player in the bedroom. Our bedroom is just for sleeping. We keep it dark, we keep candles, we keep our lemon balm there and our eye masks. Oh, speaking of which, I forgot to mention the eye masks, but in addition to the blackout curtains to reduce light, we also sleep with eye masks. And I'll show the eye mask that I have now on the screen. I believe it's called Lewis and Clark Eye Mask. I've tried a lot of different eye masks. This one has been my favorite. I love it. You can wash it in the washing machine. So I usually wash it on a weekly basis and it's soft on my eyes. That really helps. When I was first awakening to my psychic abilities and having the opening of my third eye, I used to have to wear two or three eye masks at a time to block the light enough out of my eyes to be able to sleep. But definitely try to wear an eye mask, try to wear earplugs, get your blackout curtains, make your bedroom a sanctuary for sleep. Not a sanctuary for entertainment or hanging out, but a sanctuary for sleep. Additionally, regarding light exposure, a lot of us have dark rooms, but maybe we get up in the middle of the night because we need to go to the bathroom or something like that, and then we turn on the light. That can really impact your sleep cycles as well. So if you have to get up in the night to use the restroom or something like that, definitely get up because having to go to the bathroom will make it really hard for your body to enter a deep sleep state. But if you do get up to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water, don't turn on the light. I know that might sound really strange, but it will make a really big difference. If you must use a light, use a red light, like a red headlamp or a small flashlight at night when you get up. You may find that you don't actually need a light. I actually don't use a light at all. I do sometimes get up in the night, but I find that if I don't turn on the light, my eyes are able to perceive just enough to sort of get around the house. And I can even just keep my eye mask on at this point and just walk to the restroom if I need to use the bathroom or get a drink of water with my eyes closed. And you could probably do that too if you're pretty familiar with your house. But if you don't open your eyes or you don't look at light, it can, it'll be pretty easy to go back to sleep, even if you have woken up in the middle of the night. So those are the main tips that I wanted to share with you all in this video today, but I also have some miscellaneous tips. First, create subconscious indicators that it is time to sleep. For example, only wear your pajamas when you're sleeping. That way, as soon as you pull out your, your pajamas, your subconscious mind will realize that it's time to sleep because you're only seeing those pajamas when it's time to sleep and that's sending the signal to your mind. The same goes for the fan or the white noise indicator or lighting a certain candle when you're laying down for bed every night. Your subconscious mind will make the connection, oh there's the fan or oh there's that sound of the white noise indicator or there's that scent of the candle, it's time to sleep. So keep the things that you use for sleep only for sleeping and that will help to strengthen than the subconscious connection. One of my subconscious indicators is this lotion. Like I said, I usually take a shower at night or a bath at night, and when I get out, I put this lotion on my body, and as soon as I smell the scent of this lotion, even if I'm not feeling tired, when I start to smell the scent of this lotion, I have to get it away from me a little bit, it's gonna start working, um, then I start to yawn and I start to feel sleepy, and it may be partially because this is a lavender lotion, and lavender does help with sleep, but honestly, I think you could do this with any lotion, any perfume, any essential oil, just be sure that you only put it on when it's bedtime, and and within just a couple nights, it will start to make a subconscious link. You may also find a benefit from using the same meditation or prayer every night before you go to bed. The important thing again is that you only do this before you go to bed. That way it creates that sort of link and knowingness within you, it's time for bed. I personally recommend 
that you go to sleep when you are tired. Some people would recommend that you set the same sleep time every single night or you try to force your body to a specific sleep time every night and that that's the most important thing. And I think it is important to turn off the lights at a specific time every night and to relax ourselves at a specific time every night to maybe take our shower at a specific time every night or go in our room at a specific time every night. But I do not think that it is helpful to force ourselves to close our eyes and go to sleep at the same time every single night. Because if you're really not tired, that can create a lot of anxiety. If you're trying to force yourself to sleep and you're just sitting awake. And again, highly sensitive and intuitive people can experience times where we're not as tired because of things like the full moon cycle or other astrological events that can stimulate us a little bit. So I think it's a good idea to set the goal to be in your bedroom at a specific time doing a non-stimulating activity. But for me, I don't actually ever try to go to sleep until I really feel sleepy and tired. So I give myself permission if I want to, to read a book quietly in bed for an hour or two hours or however long that I need to feel sleepy enough to go to sleep. My final tip is to make it your goal to sleep before 10.30 p.m. Now if you're currently staying up all night and not going to bed until 3 or 4 then do this gradually over time but we get our most restful sleep before midnight. Specifically we get the sleep that helps us to heal our endocrine system and our hormonal system before midnight at night. So if you're feeling like really, really tired and you're feeling really sleep deprived and you are really struggling, try to turn off the lights around 8 to do your quiet activity starting at 9 and try to close your eyes around 10 with the goal to sleep around 10 30. what you'll likely find is that your most restful sleep is occurring before midnight so the earlier that you can get to bed the better try to prioritize your life so that you're getting the sleep that you need many people who are highly sensitive people psychic individuals need more sleep so although the FDA might tell us we need eight hours of sleep or six to eight hours of sleep be honest with yourself do you need eight and a half do you need nine do you need ten try to prioritize sleep in your life so that you have the time that you need every single night to get enough sleep and this will help you to be in greater alignment with your soul. So thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you'll try some of these tips yourself and I'm wishing you all very, very sweet dreams. So thank you again and namaste. Bye!